Hello and welcome back to another Jobless tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering the basics of uh, manipulating maps in Sapien, how to place player spawns, neat game flags, scenery and various other items. To get started we're going to need to import a range of different items into Sapien. So I'm going to start by importing a few different items of scenery. Just at random. A few items that will look good in this particular scenario. Okay, with the items imported. Placing scenery is not overly difficult, but there are some important things you may want to consider. The first of which is simply by placing scenery, can you block off the players from seeing each other straight at the beginning of the game? For example, right now, if you spawn here, you can see right into the enemy base, which is not a good thing because if that's the case, the opponent can simply be sniped by the beginning of the game. You have spawn killing occurring, and it just affects the fun of everyone else. So, to combat that, we're going to be using barricades and other such things to stop the players from being shot at. I'm just going to import a, another barrier here. This one's a personal favourite of mine, F underscore shield. I found it on the Halo Custom website. It's, um, yeah, just, just look up F underscore shield and you should be able to find it. Forerunner shield, I believe, is what's saved on it. So I've got a forerunner shield there, and I'm just going to put another one near behind it. So, effectively, what that does is stops the opponent from looking straight into the base at the beginning of the game. Do the same on the other side, use 180 here to flip, and I've achieved a block. You don't necessarily have to use 4 minus shield, but the important thing to remember is whatever your BSP looks like, and you may not even have to do this, it might be around the corner, is that you don't want the players spawn killing each other right at the beginning of the game. Other pieces of scenery can be placed simply to give the player something to look at to make the um, BSP a little more interesting. For example, you may want to put shards of metal. Um, I recommend using the ones in the B50 um, map, the level tag folder for that under the scenery folder because it contains ones that actually look like they're uh, off a floor in a structure. The uh, metal shards that come default in the scenery pack are mainly current versions, so they don't look quite right. go. So placing scenery, yes, just, just place it. You, you want to use some scenery to provide cover and others just to look for decoration. That's just purely piece of decoration with these functions cover. The next step you want to go and do is placing player spawns. Place it, you want to place the player spawns in a position where it does not automatically grant that player an unfair advantage, like for example be appearing right next to a rocket launcher. You also want to have some that appear inside the actual base of that player's team. And then for games where the players are in a sort of slayer environment, you want it just to be in general places, not necessarily in the bases, but in places that do not grant any unfair advantage and just seem to be a good position to start it, as it were. When placing player spawns, it's a good idea to... Um, as I said before, grade them. So these ones here will be four games. However, these four here, this one here, for example, you want something that, for example, only appears in Slayer. So in a game of Capture the Flag, you don't automatically get the opposing team appearing over here, for example. Another important note is the team index here. So, for example, player spawns that appear in the blue base are always going to be team index one. Whereas player spawns appear in the red and next always going to be team index zero. Although Slayer is generally free for all, you can also have a team Slayer game, so therefore even these Slayer ones here, you probably want these two here to be team index zero and these two to be team index one in this particular map. Your map will look different, obviously, because you've been designing it differently to mine. But in this particular case, that's how you would set it up. 
The next part of a multiple air map is Nikang flags. So there are a number of different flags. Um, probably one of the most important ones is the catch the flag flag. So in order to use that, I like to use a um, flag base, which can be found in the scenery folder by default, right here. And that just adds a nice place in which the uh, flag can spawn from. So you got, ah, sorry, wrong one. So I'm just going to place a couple of those here. One flag here, and you want another flag in the same position at the enemy base. And then you simply put the neat game flag for that flag on top of it. So this is team index one, it's the blue flag, and it will be team index zero because it's the red flag. Other flags you may wish to consider placing, I'm not going to probably place them on this map because it's a bit too small for it, would be the uh, king of the hill flag. So for that you just simply hit king for hill flag and you want zero and you want to place it in a square like that or a circle depending on what shape the king of the hill area looks like. Um, it needs to be placed though in, in an object for example like that. It can't be placed something, well it could be placed something like that but the object is going to look really weird when it actually goes to spawn that particular king of the hill flag area. Um, in Crazy King, the flag change moves, so you may wish to have another flag area set up like this, for example, with team index one. Then there is the oddball. So oddball has one spawn generally, and it's just where the oddball respawns at. On occasion, you may wish the oddball to respawn in different places every time. So you go to index one, two, three, etc. To change where the oddball spawns each time it respawns. Um, I won't cover race flags here because it's a bit too small for that. But what I will cover is teleport flags. So teleport is pretty simple. You place your teleport start here. So teleport from. So whenever a flag um, touches that flag, they teleport from there to the nearest teleport to flag. The teleport from and the teleport to, for example, this might be teleport from three, has will always teleport to teleport to three, which is dedicated by the uh, team index issued. The final uh, thing that I believe I should be showing you is placing neat game equipment, which is weapons, pretty much. Weapons, equipment, ammunition, no, not ammunition, so weapons, equipment, and power-ups. So, for example, I might want a weapon here, and I might want this weapon to be a uh, placement rifle. So I'll go into the item collections, single weapons, and I'll select placement rifle. That will automatically place it with the correct amount of ammunition and everything, and it will respawn after a certain amount of time. That's how you change the spawn time if you wanted to do that. I could also place a grenade, same thing, do it again, go into grenade, grenade. You may wish to place health packs, preferably one in each base, maybe even two. So you just go out of this one into power ups here, and you place a health pack. Do the same to the other side. You don't want to place weapons that don't match the size of this map. I would never place a sniper rifle on this map. It's too small to really fit a sniper rifle. Same with a proper launcher. If someone tried a proper launcher, that would be completely OP and it would affect the game mechanics. So generally in this size map, I would only place really short to medium range weapons. A flamethrower maybe, but in the final version of this map, I have not put a flamethrower. I'll now take you to the final version of this map so you can see how it looks. There we go. So this here is the final version. This is how I've um, finished setting it up. As you can see, I've uh, placed some of the objects here to block line of sight from the direct spawn point. I've put some metal shards from the B50 assault on the control room that actually look like metal shards, not like forerunner metal shards. The default, so um, covenant, the default metal shards that you'll find in the scenery folder are purple, not grey, except for this one here. That will be a grey one. Um, I've placed lights here, blue lights the blue base, red lights the red base, they are located under landing beacons if you're interested, and I've got my play bases. Then if we look at the player spawns, if we look at the player spawns, I've placed some in each base, and then I've got one here and one here which are Slayer only player spawns. I keep a minimal amount of player spawns because I do not want too many players on this map. It's too small to have a large, too many people on it. I would estimate maybe eight people on this map max. Any more than that would just get ridiculous. 
if I go into decals, I place some decals here. You cannot see them here um, because they will only appear when the game has been compiled. But to place decals such as carbon, so I fall under symbols where you guess what the carbon symbols do. You go add decal, which can be found in the B30 folder if you've installed the um, single player campaign tags. And then decals environment, and there are a number of different decals you can place in there. They just add a little bit of colour to the uh, game. I've also placed some sound sinew. Sound sinew is small localised areas of sound, as you can hear there. So it just adds a little bit of ambience to the map around that pillar area. There are a number of different types of sound scenery. Sound scenery can be found in, once again, the B30. B30 has a lot of different interesting tags in it. And just, that's under sound, sound effects, sound scenery. There are a number of different sound scenery ones in there. As you can see, Ambience has a huge amount of different ones, for example. As you can see. Finally, I have got the net game equipment. I've only been placing, as you can see, sort of close to medium range. I've even stayed away from flamethrower. Two health packs in each base, and just the basic weapons, plasma pistols, plasma rifles, assault rifles, shotgun is probably the most powerful, and a needler, if I can listen to one of each, gives the uh, player some test over. If you want to make this map interesting, you want to make some weapons, you know, desirable. So that's why you're going to usually place one of those weapons in each map. It creates a bit more of a conflict, which is what this game is about. So that's um, using Sapien. I hope you found it useful. If you have any issues, um, I'd recommend once again creating an account on the uh, Halo Maps form if you've not already done so, and posing questions there. One final thing to note. If you're interested in obtaining other players' scenery items, just various custom pieces of scenery, go onto the Halo Maps website at the top here under Halo C Maps and select Scenery. Yeah, there's also buy pins and various other tag files or other people's multiplayer maps if you're interested in playing them. As you can see, there's an enormous amount of scenery here, or 10 pages worth of it. So yeah, have, have a look at it. You may find something.